Welcome to Glass Half Full, your sports advisory program with Johnny Gale, Eric E Z E Cohen, and Nikki, the great Stoikos. Hello, sports fans. Nikki, the great Stoikos, here with you for week 13 of Glass Half Full. Now, normally I'd be joined by my good friend and host Johnny Gale, as well as fellow sports handicapper Eric Easy E. Cohen, but both of the fellas are on vacation this week. Easy E. Cohen, up 2,100 on the season, decided to take some of his winnings and go on vacation to the Aloha State in Hawaii. Have some fun, big fella. We'll see you next week. Johnny Gale was a smart man, took my gold pick last week, hammered the Bills money line, and he's enjoying some of his winnings in the City of Angels in Los Angeles. Now, not to worry, they'll both be back next week. For this week, week 13, I'm going to be doing the show solo. Jumping into a recap for last week, I was perfect on my metal picks. Had the Bills money line and spread for my gold picks. They destroyed the crappy Jacksonville Jaguars. Had the Ravens minus 10 for my silver pick. They beat up on the lowly Raiders. I had the over in the Brown Cincy game. That total flew over. And I nearly had the perfect week. The only thing that got me wrong was my stinky fishy line of the week with the Arizona Cardinals. Up 10-0 after the first quarter. 45 unanswered for the Chargers. Ruined my parlay and my teaser. Have a look. There's the parlay. There's the teaser. Look at that. Five out of six. Seven out of eight. That's how close I was to perfection. Still had a wonderful week. Up 2200 bucks on the week, bringing my season total back up to 8500 Easy E. Cohen, on the other hand, lost a small bit, seven units on the week. He hit his top pick, his gold pick with the Dolphins, minus 10. Missed on his silver pick and missed on the bronze pick with the Bengals and the Steelers, respectively. He hit two teasers, uh, but he lost on a couple of Thanksgiving picks. His overall season earnings, $12,120 in the black. We're going to look to get right back into things with week 13. Here we go. Now my bronze pick this week, I like the Washington Redskins plus six and a half at Philadelphia on Monday Night Football, and let me tell you why. These Redskins have been playing some pretty good football since the gruesome leg injury to Alex Smith. We wish him the best of luck in his recovery. Since he went down, Colt McCoy came in, and I like what I've seen from the guy. They nearly beat the Texans in that game that he came in to replace Alex. And after that, they went to Dallas on Thanksgiving in a game they very easily could have won. Uh, they were tight with it for the most part. They should have definitely covered the spread. Couldn't believe the absurd non-call by the officials on the helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit that would have put Washington at the one-yard line. They would have punched it in, covered the number, cost me 500 bucks. But hey, what are you going to do? That was then. This is now. This week, I like them to keep this game tight with Philly. All right, they're coming off extra rest, the Redskins are, having played on Thanksgiving, and the Eagles are coming off a very emotional victory over a Giants team that they should not have beat. This Eagles team, let me tell you something about the Philadelphia Eagles. They're overvalued every single week with the point spread, just like you expect them to be as a defending Super Bowl champions. They're not even close to the same team that won the championship last year. All right, they have a ton of injuries going on right now and I think we're going to see the Redskins keep this game close because of that. It's a must win for both teams therefore I expect it to be tight down to the wire. All right and we got some good bonus trends going in our favor here. The Redskins are six and two against the spread in the last eight meetings and they are eight and three against the spread the last 11 meetings in Philadelphia. So they know how to keep the games tight with this team especially in Philadelphia. All right, these Eagles also 3-8 and eight against the point spread this year. They've covered three spreads all year. Week 1 against Atlanta, a Thursday nighter against the Giants, and a Quidditch match against the lowly Jags in London. All right, other than that, eight times they haven't covered the number. I think that's what we're going to see here. Also, the Eagles have won one game all year by more than seven points, so I think this spread is too high. I think the Redskins actually win this game outright. I love them this week. They might be worth a sprinkle on the money line at plus 220, but they're my bronze pick for eight units at plus six and a half. Let's go, Washington. Now, my silver pick this week is the Seattle Seahawks minus 10 at home against the 49ers. All right, this game is going to be a blowout, and let me tell you why. Seattle's playing at a very high level right now. They started their season off 1-3, and, and it really looked like they were going into rebuild mode. 
But instead, they quietly ripped off four victories in their last six games, with their only two defeats coming to the Rams and the Chargers, two very good teams. So Seattle is a very battle-tested team, all right? Wilson's playing at a very high level right now. He's finding Lockett and Baldwin for some deep balls. I think it's going to continue against a Niners team who, other than the former Seahawk Richard Sherman, is in shambles right now. They also have the Reuben Foster domestic violence drama serving as a distraction. It obviously didn't serve him well, being a surprise last Sunday morning before the Bucks game when they scored nine points uh, and lost that game convincingly. His presence was clearly missed on the field, but either way, a distraction for that team and definitely a loss, a downgrade. He's still a talented player on the field. Now, Seattle is in thick with this NFC wildcard race. It's a huge game for them. Their energy levels are going to be through the roof. And the 12th man, century length field, it's a tough place to play. Let me tell you, I watched a game there myself. I had to have earplugs in. My head nearly exploded off my shoulders like a gusher commercial, all right? I think Nick, Nick Mullins might have his head explode in this game. I think he's going to get eaten alive by that defense. And you know what? He hasn't played too many good teams. In fact, three career starts for him. He beat the lowly Raiders, then he lost to the Giants, and he lost to the Bucks. Those are some three god-awful defenses. He's going to be in for a rude awakening, this rookie is, against his Seattle team. I think this point spread is four points off, okay? You got the Packers minus 14 and a half at home against Zona this week. You got the Chiefs minus 15 in Oakland this week. I think this should be Seattle minus 14 against 49ers. Not minus 10. Minus 10 looks like a steal. San Francisco is 0-6 straight up on the road. Okay, They stink. They're going to be 0-7 after this game. And when I know a team cannot win the game, I think they're not going to cover the points. I like Seattle minus the 10 for my silver pick. It's for 10 units. There's also some good bonus trends going in our favor this week. The 49ers 1-4 against the spread their last five games overall. Uh, their last six games against NFC West teams, 1-5 and five against the spread. Head-to-head -head trends between San Fran and Seattle show that the 49ers are 2-10-1 against the spread their last 13 meetings head-to-head. -head. And they're 1-5-1 and one against the spread the last seven meetings in Seattle. So they do not play the Seahawks well. They certainly don't travel to Century Link field well. And Seattle on the flip side, like I said, they're balling at a high level. Last seven games overall, 5-1-1 one one against the points. And I like this trend. Last 16 occasions in week 13, they're 14 and 2 against the spread. So for whatever reason they cover the spread in week 13, it's a bonus tread like I said. I liked them before I read it. I like them even more afterwards. And uh, I just think this spreads off. I think Mr. Wilson and Mr. Carroll are going to have a field day on this garbage 49ers team. And do not be surprised if we see this Seahawks team make the playoffs. They're my silver pick, 10 units, Seattle minus 10. Now, my goal pick this week is the Indianapolis Colts minus four at Jacksonville. All right, I'm going to be fading the Jags here for my goal pick, just like I did last week when I said Buffalo was going to win outright, just like they did. These Jaguars are spiritually crushed. Two weeks ago, the Steelers ripped their hearts out of their chest and stomped on them, putting the final nail in a coffin, which was a very disappointing season for these Jags. They had high expectations, which they clearly didn't meet. Now, they have lost seven straight football games. The Colts have won five straight. These teams couldn't be going in more opposite directions. And this Jags offense is about to go from bad to worse, and let me tell you why. All right, Doug Marone, head coach, just fired offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett and benched quarterback Blake Bortles for Cody Kessler. This guy stinks, okay? Eight career starts, two and six against the spread. He hardly has an NFL caliber arm he really can't throw the ball very well and to boot Leonard Fournette is suspended for this game for a fight against the Bills last week the energy levels for the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be near the ground level okay they're polishing up their golf clubs getting ready for the offseason they're not going to bring anything to this game energy wise the Colts are going to be way up here because they're right in the thick of the wild card race in fact they can still catch Houston for the division they got a big game against Houston in a few weeks. Houston may lose to the Browns this week. So this is a huge game for Indy. It's not a huge game for Jacksonville. They don't care. Indy does very much. It's going to be a drastic, drastic difference in energy levels. All right? I think this spread is off by at least three points. Minus four? I think it should be at least seven, maybe even closer to nine and a half. I think the Colts are going to win this game by double digits. All right? These teams met a few weeks ago, and Luck had a great day throwing the football 21 of 29 for 285 yards and three touchdowns. I think we're going to see him have even more success in this game. I really love the Colts. I don't think they made this spread high enough. Give me Indianapolis for my goal pick 
12 units, minus four is a steal. Mr. Luck, go out there, have a field day, big fella. Let's see you make the playoffs. I'm rooting for you, and I'm banking on you this week. Indianapolis, minus four, my goal pick. Let's go Colts. So that wraps things up for my metal picks this week and leads us right into my fishy line of the week, all right? It's Cleveland plus six and a half at Houston, and I think this point spread is a little bit fishy. Let me tell you why, okay? Despite an eight-game winning streak by these Texans, I think they're a little bit overrated, okay? Four of their eight wins during this streak have come by three points or fewer, so they're definitely vulnerable. And the biggest reason I think they're overrated is because they cannot block for shit. Okay, Watson has been taking a lot of sacks lately, and I think that this Cleveland, much improved Cleveland defense, led by Mr. Miles Garrett, is going to make life miserable for Deshaun Watson in this game. I think we're going to see him on his backside a few more times, okay? Cleveland also has been playing some very good football. After firing the notorious loser Hugh Jackson and getting him out of that organization, they've been balling, okay? They beat up on the Falcons, went into their bye, fit, went into their bye week, went into Cincinnati, beat the snot out of the Bengals, and now they're going into Houston. I also think this spread is a bit of an overreaction based on what we saw on Monday night. I loved Houston in that game. I thought they were going to play with very high energy levels after their owner passed away, which they did. But what happens when people see teams win big on nationally televised games is they overreact a little bit and the next point spread is a bit inflated. This spread should be closer to three and a half, four and a half. Instead, it's six and a half, passing through a key number of six in football. So I love Cleveland to keep this game close. I think they're actually going to win this game outright, believe it or not. Houston, overrated. Browns, underrated. I really like them to keep it tight. Give me Cleveland plus the six and a half points for five units, 500 bucks. My fishy line of the week. I don't think Houston's going to do it. You're overrated. Let's go Brownies. Let's go Dog Pound. Now, before we close things out, I got a special teaser and parlay for the smaller betters out there. And I was inches away from hitting last week. I only had one small blemish. I'm going to try and correct that this week. The teaser is going to be an 18, seven-point teaser that pays 11 to 1. And the roulette parlay is a 17 parlay, pays 39 to 1. Let's start it off with the teaser. It's got my four main plays with Indianapolis, Seattle, Washington, and Cleveland, all teased to their respective numbers, as well as the Buffalo Bills, plus 12. The LA Rams, minus 3. The Baltimore Ravens, plus 8. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, plus 10.5. I think the Bucs beat the Panthers outright this week. That's an 18, 7-point teaser. Pays 11 to 1. I'm putting 200 bucks for 2200 And here we go with the roulette parlay of the week. This one pays 39 to 1. It's a 7-game parlay. I'm mixing in some spreads, some money lines, and some alternate spreads. Okay, here we go. I got the Colts minus 4. I got the Seahawks minus 9.5 for a price of minus 125. I got the Chicago Bears money line at minus 190. I got the New England Patriots minus 220 on the money line. I also got the Cleveland Browns plus eight at a price of minus 143. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus four and a half, price of minus 137. And Monday Night Football to close it off, the Washington Redskins plus eight for a price of minus 143. That'll pay you 39 to one. I'm putting 100 bucks for almost 4,000. Bet what you can afford. Remember, know your limits, stay within them. Everything in moderation, even moderation, for Glass Half Full, everybody else at Fanatics View, for Johnny Gale, Eric Easy E. Cohen, enjoy your vacations. We'll all see you week 14. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Good luck.